if I if I had bought both uh, Coinbase and Nvidia and sold something else, would I have been happier about that decision? Sure, I would have been happier. Actually, from the time we bought Coinbase uh, to the time maybe we were talking to you or w whenever we measured it, Coinbase actually had done better than Nvidia. It has come back in. Nvidia has had another uh, big run, um, but we're now really focused on the future. And uh, so uh, software to us is um, going to be a huge opportunity. Foundation models, uh, we think, uh, will uh, deliver $15 trillion around that in the next five to 10 years in wow. market cap. That's from a standing start. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and we'll see what happens to NVIDIA over that time. Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us and we read every comment and the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. Eric Haig Investment Management CEO Kathy Woods says the Federal Reserve rate cut was not a mistake after a reassuring September employment report. Wood also says that regulations are strangling this economy and comments on investing in AI. It's been very interesting to watch the revisions in ec economic activity. Until this report, the revisions in the employment numbers had been down, and they were much me much weaker uh, than had uh, originally been reported. You know, we look at uh, earnings reports and look at their revenues, and we're seeing a lot of companies showing negative revenues. So. You know, the headline numbers are heavily influenced recently, certainly in, in terms of some of the upward revisions in personal income by transfer payments, that's government stimulus, and interestingly, uh, dividends. But not if you look at the uh, economy, the cyclical part of the economy is sick. It's sick. If you look at uh, the sectors in the economy, one by one, they've been falling into a recession, no matter what the headline numbers say. Housing went down immediately when the uh, Fed started raising rates. We're, we're down 20 to 40 percent still. That's a recession. Hmm. Uh, you've got non-residential construction in recession, so, autos, very weak, those sectors. And then you've got uh, the, the small and medium business sector. Uh, their confidence is at 08, 09 levels. And we've got certain pricing measures, uh, certainly the cyclical ones, uh, that have been deflationary, actually. Uh, so one thing that uh, I do think is going on that is helping is as prices are coming down and the, cons the consumer's getting better and better deals and, uh, and they're spending. Uh, so I think that is sustaining. You know, a lot of people say real growth causes inflation. In this case, and actually in history, most times if you cut prices, you'll get more activity. Uh, the consumer, as long as the labor market hangs in here, and, and yes, today was very reassuring that mm -hmm. way. As mm -hmm. long as the labor market hangs in here, uh, and the and companies like Walmart and Costco and uh, auto companies either increase their discounts or cut their prices, I think the activity will come uh, and the labor market will continue to hang in. Uh, but if they try and jack prices back up, it was very interesting to see FedEx after turning positive in revenues and then turning negative year over year on rev revenues, basically saying they're going to use prices to make it up. I think that's going to backfire. Uh, and I'll think, I think during the next year, you'll under, that many people will understand how deflationary the undercurrents are in the economy. Now, deflation is not always bad. Part of it is because of innovation technologically enabled innovation. The car prices, EV prices are coming down. Their costs are coming down too. So um, I think there, there's, a, uh, there's a lot of confusion in terms of what's going on out there uh, because productivity is stronger than expected, giving companies the latitude 
uh, to cut prices and salvage margins. If that, if that sustains, great. Betters at Polymarket are eyeing a strong possibility of Len Sassaman getting identified as Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto in the keenly awaited HBO documentary. Gambles favoring Sassaman were at 39% as of this writing on the cryptocurrency-based prediction market. The highest in the list that included names of famous people believed to be pseudonymous creators at different times in the past. A cypherpunk and developer of the PGP encryption and privacy technology, Sassaman's name has been frequently thrown around in the mystery saga. His death in July 2011 was priested by Nakamoto's final communication to Bitcoin developers, an eerie coincidence that strengthened the theory. Next on the list was Blockstream CEO Adam Back, with more than 11% odds in favor. Back was supposedly one of the first two people to receive an email from Satoshi before Bitcoin's white paper was formally published. Late American software developer Hal Finney, who was the recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction from Satoshi, had 3% of the total bets in favor. The documentary titled Money Electric, The Bitcoin Mystery, claiming to unravel the Internet's biggest mystery, is slated to premiere on Tuesday. A two 30-minute trailer dropped last week piqued the interest, not just of cryptocurrency enthusiasts, but also of other followers who wanted to discover the true identity of the cult figure. Nakamoto purportedly holds around 1.1 million Bitcoin, according to on-chain analytics platform Arkham Intelligence, making him one of the richest people in the world. Yeah, um, we would this year. I mean, we're going to have to push it out because inflation did levitate uh, as companies tried to price to make up for shortfalls in unit growth. It levitated in the three and a half to four percent range. Now it's broken below three, uh, and uh, we're hearing more and more companies, you know, basically trying to attract consumer attention with lower prices. So yes, if you look at money growth on a year-over-year -year basis, mm -hmm. it was negative for, I think, about a year and a half, maybe more. Uh, money is a leading indicator for inflation, and we do believe uh, that inflation will go much lower than people expect right now. Wouldn't be surprised to see it go negative. Uh, especially, especially if the consumer dis is worried about uh, job loss, whether because of AI and automation generally, um, or what have you. So the saving rate tends to go up during those periods, and that will mean, we believe, that companies will have to price even more aggressively. In terms of over 5% uh, unemployment rate, mm -hmm. uh, we could see it. We, we we could see it. I will say today uh, gave me pause in terms of this productivity dynamic and mm -hmm. sort of the, okay, companies may not, if they get the productivity growth from existing uh, employees, they may not feel like lowering, uh, yeah. laying them off. They can lower prices to keep uh, consumer demand going. Bitcoin is trying to close the week above $62,500 well above the intra-week low of just under $60,000. This suggests buying at lower levels. Although the start to October, generally the strongest month of the year, has been slow, analysts expect things could pick up going forward. One positive for the cryptocurrency markets is that the CME Group's FedWatch tool is pricing in a 97% probability of the Federal Reserve cutting rates by 25 basis point in their November 7 meeting. Expectations are that a rate cut would boost a risk on sentiment. Another possible trigger for a recovery could be the reduction in Bitcoin held on centralized exchanges. According to CryptoQuint data, centralized exchanges hold more than 2.8 million Bitcoin, the lowest number since November 2018. The drop in the balance reduces the available liquidity, and such occurrences are sometimes followed by bullish price movements. Ethereum Ethereum has displayed a clear downtrend in the number of whales holding more than 10,000 Ethereum since July. This drop by more than 7% is rather significant, considering large holders do act to dictate market directions. A swift fall in whale engagement indicates changes in sentiment and strategy for high net worth investors. This is indeed a shift worth keeping track of, particularly for those monitoring the king of altcoins' long-term market outlook. Despite the whale activity reduction, 62% of Ethereum holders are still in profit. This might suggest that despite some recent volatility in the past months, the market is still somewhat friendly for the majority of investors. 
Profitable holders are usually more likely to hold on to their assets and not make sudden sell-offs, which may grant a sort of stability to the market. Ethereum has also seen a series of periods of spikes in net inflow, which indicate a growing demand and activity on the network. The inflow, after yesterday's dip, seems to build up once again. Movements like these usually precede a stronger price action, as the heightened inflows can ensure increased buying pressure. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Seller. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing!